Hi everyone. Welcome to Fat to Thin Seniors r and I'm Raven. I'm 76 years old and I had gastric bypass surgery on December 16, 2019. Medicaid approved the surgery. Last week I talked about miracles and gratitude, um, a gratitude journal, a wish and want list, and why you should keep at least one of these. In this vlog, I'll be talking about the various tools in the kitchen that are out there to help you uh, on your size reduction journey. If you're curious, please join me in this journey. Continue to watch and please comment. Last week I talked about miracles and gratitude, a gratitude journal, wish list, a wish and want list, and why you should keep one, one of them at least, at the very least. This week I'm talking about the stuff in the kitchen, the various kitchen tools. I'm going to be posting, uh, putting some still pictures up here so that you can see the differences in sizes so when one comes up click on it to pause it you know so you can compare the sizes at your leisure okay so first of all you got to have a scale measuring spoons a measuring cups and measuring glasses uh, and some really small dishes which i'm going to put right here Okay. You should also use a timer. Uh, I had been using the timer on my phone, and I'm telling you what you should do that I don't do, um, and I should do. Okay. <laughs> it's it's good to keep up that thing that you did at the very being, like I did at the very beginning of this uh, after journey after the surgery, where I wouldn't eat. I would eat a bite every minute and a half. Um, I find that I'm, I'm still just shoveling it in, you know, and then I catch myself after I've done three quarters of the plate, you know. I need to put the timer back on. I also got some bariatric silverware, which I put a picture here. And you should probably also get some small pots. Now let me show you this bariatric silverware. It's it kind of looks it looks small. It looks t tiny, um, but they've it's got some real weight to it. Some the stainless steel, really good weight to them. And although they look small, they don't really fit your hand small. I mean, it feels like maybe there should be an extra half an inch or something there at the bottom, but otherwise, this is very heavy, pretty finely made stainless steel. Very good. Uh, I put the link in the um, description below. Now, to compare it, this is a so standard silverware set, you know, regular dinner fork, butter knife, not butter, knife and teaspoon. And it's compared. That's the difference between, you put it someplace you can see it, that's the difference between the, the standard and, and this one. But look at the size of the head and how much of it is left over above, above the uh, other one. The knife is small. It's sharp. It's actually sharper than this one. Uh, it has more serration, serrated edges to it. And the spoon. This is a teaspoon. It's a standard teaspoon. And that's the spoon. See the difference in size? I don't know if you can. Let me try and get you in a dark spot here. 
so you can see. But there's a big difference in the amount that each one will hold. So even though you're shoveling it in, you're not shoveling in as much as, although equally as fast, I would think, <laughs> you know. I, I, the dishes too. I went out and I bought some really tiny dishes. Let me show you the bowl, for instance. Now, this is a regular soup bowl. You noticed that it's about as big as my head. This is a standard mainstays soup bowl. It probably holds a quart. So at some point, I had bought the smaller ones. These are Corel. And these are dessert bowls, I believe. But look at that. The size of it. So after I had surgery, I somehow or other came across these tiny little Corels. This is a dessert bowl. You can see the size. Compared. So the thing that got me on this in the first place was I saw a thing, an article, a post or whatever. It must have been a post on Spark People where this woman was talking about what she had for breakfast and she showed the plate and she had this huge plate and a little bit of food here and a little bit of food here and all of the middle of the plate was empty. And I said to myself, if I had a plate like that, I would be hungry at the end of it, even though um, it was more than enough. I had the first thing I thought was, she should put that on a smaller plate. She'd be much more satisfied if the plate was smaller. It's just a little thing, but it really works well. When I'm making my little three ounces, this holds a half a cup. So this is four ounces, this is a little one. When I'm making a plate, I use these tiny, tiny, tiny little plates because the plates are overflowing with food. I mean, I can only eat three ounces. This holds four. So that means that this is going to be full almost all the way to the top, and it's going to look to me like there's a whole lot of stuff in there. Now, this is a regular tea plate. You see, you can see the rim where it holds the cup. And I also found this tiny little plate. It holds. That plate holds about four ounces max. I'd say probably three and a half ounces. It's more like it. But you see the size of it compared to a teacup plate. The smaller the plate, the better. Actually. So I don't, I don't have that feeling like I didn't eat enough. In fact... I usually get to the end of it and I say, no, no, I don't really want to go for seconds, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. Um, but to put, to put a meat and a vegetable and a starch on this plate, you know, one ounce of each, and you look like you've got a plate of food that you probably can't finish. I mean, that's the way it looks. It's kind of it's strange to me, but it feels like that too. After I finish eating, it's like I'm satisfied. So it's obviously uh, not only physically putting how much you put in your body, but it's how much you put in your eyes. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's really where it's at. So anyway, I'm still on the lookout for self-sabotaging because the mind is a wonderful thing. <laughs> And it can come up with all kinds of stuff, you know. I find that I'm eating way too fast. The tiny silverware slows me down, but that's another thing, too. With the tiny silverware, with this tiny spoon, you got to constantly, if you're going to eat fast, you still got to constantly move this arm. And I have a feeling, I had a feeling somewhere earlier in the week that it's a matter of how many times did I move my arm? Am I full? You know, 
Uh, so it's like my muscles are tuned in with my sight, with my head kind of a thing. It's strange when you start looking at this kind of thing, what you're doing to yourself, you know. At any rate, I need to start using the timer again, but I haven't. I also manage to constantly drink. Uh, after you've had bariatric surgery, they tell you not to drink because uh, the water waters down the food. It doesn't, your stomach, what's left of your stomach doesn't have time to absorb the nutrients and stuff like that. But I drink, I drink water, I drink stuff all the time. I drink before and middle of and the after of it. And um, getting mad at myself isn't working. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the way it's, you know, so I got to the point where I'm, I'm like leaving the stuff on the other side of the room. Uh, you know, the drink on the other side of the room to try and break the, the habit because it's more of a habit than anything else, I'm sure, anyway. I have gone back to measuring. Uh, I stopped measuring for about, I don't know, a week. In there. I mean, to stop measuring diligently. I, I would throw some in there and say, yes, yeah, about three ounces. Well, I'm going back to measuring and, uh, and I use the scale and I use the measuring spoons, the measuring cups, everything. Absolutely everything. Uh, I found that if I don't, if I take that one more bite, my stomach hurts, you know. Why, why am I forcing myself in pain? You know, it's, it's amazing the stuff we do to ourselves, you know. And then after a while, you know, you keep doing that and your stomach gets used to that kind of fullness, or at least your mind gets used to that kind of fullness, and then you take one more bite. And after a while, you find that you could eat an eight-ounce steak, <laughs> you know. Uh, and you're wondering, how the heck did I ever get here? Don't do it. Measure everything. Weigh it out. Got to do that. And this whole journey, anyway, is about taking care of yourself. This is probably the first time in your life, or my, in my case, my life, where I have actually, utterly, absolutely focused on me. And not everybody else. I didn't care what anybody else said. When I finally made the decision, I really didn't give a damn what anybody else thought about anything. It was time to take care of me, and I am. Uh, and I'm taking care of me the same way I would take care of somebody else. You know, with, hopefully, with self-compassion and gratitude and, you know, good stuff. So, I think that I had forgotten while I was in the throes of all of that mess, uh, getting fat and going through mind trips and all of that other crap that went on the other half of my life, the, the, because I'm going to live another 75, you see, <laughs> the other half of my life, um, I had forgotten how to meditate. I had forgotten to pray daily. I had forgotten how to eat right. Uh, I forgot to eat what I liked. I would eat what everybody else liked. I would make dinner for what everybody else wanted. I it just never did it for me, you know. I had forgotten how to get up and move, just dance. I had stopped listening to music. I had forgotten a lot of stuff. I forgot how to play. So the point is that this journey, this journey to lose weight, to get myself back to whom I was, who I feel I am, uh, and the point of that is to take care of yourself. Nobody else can take care of you the way you can, and nobody else will take care of you the way you do, can because they're not inside of you. They don't know what you need and what you don't need. Even if you tell them, they will not get it. Even if they've had a similar experience, 
it's not you. It's not your experience. So the only one I can take care of you is you. Okay. I don't know. I used to go through, um, I'll, I'll take care of this. I'll do that and, and then I'll take me, care of me later on. It doesn't work. It really doesn't. You need to get rid of the negative people in your life and increase your, your circle of positive people. And, and you need to be ruthless about it. Just as ruthless as it is about taking care of yourself. So consider yourself worth taking care of too. Which means, of course, that you have to take responsibility for your life, for what you do, what you don't do. I had to take responsibility, and so I did. Don't like something? Change it. There is always a way to do better, to change it, to do different. I mean, a sidestep, you know? So anyway, I'll stop preaching here. And uh, say they say you should probably check your closets and whatnot and see what tools you've got to help you and and commit to using those tools, okay? So and then I guess I should give you a Raleigh report. <laughs> Raleigh's down at my feet and I keep pushing my feet back into his belly. On the sh the thunder shirt is absolutely wonderful, still absolutely wonderful, though he seems to be getting used to it. And it is, he's reverting some of his behavior back to some of his older behavior. Uh, he's still kind of quiet. He doesn't really want to run to the door and bark at people, but he does. And he barks at people if they come in the house. Uh, although, you know, today I don't know. Today, the, a friend came over and he barked the whole time she was here until I put the shirt on him. And then he kind of go growled, you know, like, don't come near me. We're trying to figure out if it was a woman or a man that abused him. Um, but he actually growls at everybody. So I don't know. I mean, women, men, children, he does, it doesn't matter. He will growl at them. So, Lord knows he must have been hurt by an entire family. I mean, who knows? Anyway, actually, too, if he's got the shirt on and he, he starts running towards the door like he's getting ready to be excited, you could, you could tell in his body that he's, he's gotten really hyped about something. And you say, no, he'll stop in his tracks kind of look at the door and give you that like why am I running to the door and then stops and he comes back out back and sits down without really barking I don't know we'll get to the end of this it's only been a week right so now he comes over if we get ready to go outside he comes over he stands very quietly while I put the thunder shirt on and before we go out for a walk and when I put the thunder shirt on, then I put his harness on. When we come back, I take his harness off. He'll walk away so that I can't take off his shirt. So I leave it on until maybe an hour or so later. But I found that if I take the shirt off and we go for a walk, you know, with just the harness on, he becomes crazy again. He's belligerent. He, ad he attacks at everything and anything. Uh, lunges at people. In fact, he's worse with that now than he was before I got the thunder shirt and he was acting crazy. So, I don't know. And then the last thing I worry about with that shirt is that um, he's got fur and it's getting to be hot outside. It's been cool for this last week, but um, it goes up to 113 here. You know, 110 degrees is no thing, you know. I can't have him out there wearing that shirt. I'm hoping that by that time he will have dropped some of his anxiety so that um, we can walk without it. But we'll see. So anyway, to sum up, I'm feeling good. I got no regrets about this surgery. Absolutely none. 
I would do it again, even though I'm more in the, I'm, I'm losing again. Actually, I still, this is amazing. This is the second video in a row that I have forgotten to put down, to, to calculate how much I've lost from this week to last week. And this looks like I gained a half a pound because I'm 183 and this was 182.6. So I guess I'm not losing. Well, who knows? I feel thinner though. That's, I mean, not, see now that's a case of the crazies there. I feel thinner. My skin feels thinner than it has been. My stomach is beginning to feel thinner and I get on a scale and I'm a half a pound heavier, huh? So anyway, so I guess it's not such a major thing with me anymore, uh, this weight. I just assume that I'm going to lose it and that I'm going to stay on the track and keep going and everything is going to be okay. So I don't have to worry about it. So overall, I'm losing both inches and pounds, so I'm happy. And that's all that matters anyway, right? <laughs> so anyway, so to sum up, that's it. I'm feeling good. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And don't forget to click on show more to see the links for the Thunder shirt. <coughs> Excuse me, the Thunder shirt and other ways to calm your dog. There's a way to wrap them in a scarf so you don't have to spend the $35 for a thunder shirt, you know, or whatever. Uh, you could give them valerian or other things. There are pressure points, like right here on their muzzle, right about there on the muzzle. Uh, that works. And it also works, the thunder shirt anyway, works on cats. So if you've got a crazy cat, and there are crazy cats out there. <laughs> this might be it might be a good thing for them. There's also information about poi spinning and dancing, walking, hiking poles, and that kind of thing in the description below. I'm still going. I'm up to two and a half miles now, sometimes three miles a day. So I'm working at it. Take care of yourself. Take care of you and yours. And blessed be. Thank <laughs> you.